Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. In today's episode, I'm going to be unpacking the new Microsoft Partner Program and the Solutions Partner designation that will be coming into market in October of this year, so just a couple months from the time of this recording. There are some heavy implications, though, for MSPs, in my opinion, as you saw maybe in the title of this video, where they are going to be eliminating the legacy competencies, including your silver and gold competencies you may have been achieving over the past few years. So in this video, I'm going to be unpacking the major changes, the overview of how you achieve these new designations, and then actually walking you through Partner Center so you can see where you stack up against these designations today and what you have to do to achieve them so you can better evaluate if you're going to be able to meet those in the future. And finally, I'll wrap up with some timelines so you understand when this transition is happening and when you have your hard cutoff date when you will no longer be able to achieve those legacy competencies. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. So getting into it here, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of background around the program and then go through the high level changes as we continue throughout the presentation. But this slides directly from Microsoft. This is their content talking about the value add of the new program. And one of the first things you'll notice is the simplifying of our programs messaging, which really resonates because if you've been part of the program for years now, you know, it's kind of messy, it's kind of confusing to navigate, especially in Partner Center. And with all the competencies with unique requirements, it's hard to know what you need to achieve in order to get where you need to be. They've done a better job over the past few years of simplifying that within Partner Center, but it desperately needs even more simplification. So definitely resonate with that type of messaging. The other thing that you have to take note here is that this was first announced back in March of this year, but many of us were busy with a little thing called new commerce experience which is probably why you may have been first hearing about this today or you may not have been paying as much attention to these program changes because you saw that the changes weren't gonna come till October of this year as well too. So it's funny that you have the time to prepare, but you still do in a lot of ways and we'll get through that as we continue to unpack all the content. So when we talk about the key differences here, this is just some of the high level ones, just to give you a baseline, and then we'll dive through uniquely into all of these. The first one here is just a name change in general, like Microsoft traditionally does with every program that they start and stop. It's traditionally been known over the past, I don't know, 30 years as the Microsoft Partner Network. You have your MPN, your MPN ID. Now this is going to be called the Microsoft Cloud Partner Program or MCP, MCPP. I don't know which designation they're going to use. I'm honestly surprised they didn't call it Microsoft Defender for Partner Program. If you guys got that joke, I'm glad because it's painful to deal with the name changes sometimes. The designations that you've had in the past is silver and gold on the legacy uh, platform, and now we're shifting into a single designation for everybody called a solutions partner. Annual fees you had to pay, 475 for action pack, 1670 for silver, and 4730 for gold. They're shifting that and basically accommodating or, or carrying over the uh, gold fee into solutions partner. So it's not any intermediary in between as much as the silver plan, but they are keeping action pack at the same rate and at the same benefits as you have today. So that's widely going to be unchanged uh, during this transition. The measurements here is, is probably the biggest part, and we'll unpack this again more as we continue through the content. But previously, you had about 20 potential competencies you could achieve in the old program, and you had various requirements through each of those. And in the new program, you have six solution partner designations, but a lot of those have much larger emphasis on growth metrics. And we'll go into the uniqueness of that again once we get into the partner center environment that I have for you today. The benefits here, you had your IURs, or your internal use licensing, which typically people got things like E3 licensing, 100 E3 licenses or 25 E3 licenses for free. And that was one of the major licenses that you use within your own internal tenant. You also have your incentive payouts, so just your percentage of rebates that you get for your total spend that you get as far as whenever you achieve a competency, you get that payout monthly from Microsoft. The change here in the new Microsoft Partner Program is that they're just changing the name to Product Benefits. Okay, I'm down with that. That makes sense. I don't need to know what an IUR is or confuse people with that type of an acronym. And the other thing that I noticed, which again we'll dive into, is that the licensing is better than the legacy program, meaning the license types, the license quantities, everything like that is actually way better than what you previously got. 
set of payouts are going to be the same. And as you see on the last column there or the last row, the core incentive is unchanged. You have the same percentage kickback at this point in time, at least for being on the new uh, partner program. So when we talk about these six designations here, these are the six that you can obtain. And as you can see, they're all in bucketized categories here, depending on your area of focus. A lot of people like they were previously will gravitate towards modern work. And there are some people that will gravitate towards Azure just because you're Azure specialist or maybe the business applications because you're D365 or dynamic specialist as well too. And this all makes sense from the standpoint of just understanding what buckets you might fall into, what categories you might want to try and pursue, depending on the focus area of your MSP and where you derive practice today. But again, the average MSP that I know of at least is going to try to gravitate towards modern work. When we take a look at the previous program, this is all how they map. You see the legacy competencies over here on the left, and then you see the new partner center designations here on the right. So they're just mapping all of these and kind of bundling them all together. And so at a first glance at this point in time, you know, after looking at this information, you can say to yourself, this actually seems better. These are actually, these programs or designations are actually simplifying this whole process. And this makes a whole lot of sense to me, which is great. They also have the specialized and expert program that you see on the right, which is something that was in the previous program as well too, but it just allows you to get additional badges within your environment and that'll help you out for projecting maybe some marketing content or trying to win over new customers in the future, like you may have done with silver or gold badges on your websites today. So now I want to shift into more of how it works. And as you can see on this slide, Microsoft has something that they call the partner capability score. And this is what you can use to see whether or not you've achieved the solutions partner designation for a certain category. And in this particular case, we have our columns here like modern work and security, and this is your solution area. Then on the left, you have your category for bucketizing the various points you could achieve, which is performance, skilling, and customer success. Now, when you take a look at these, this is something that's not new. If you're familiar with the incentives previously, where you had to add new customers, you had to get certs within the organization internally, and you had to have potentially in some cases, certain growth metrics that you met, like number of monthly active users to achieve certain standards. The key difference here is that they're kind of bundling all these together and just upping the metrics of which you have to hit. And we'll get more into that when we pivot into the partner center portal. But at the end of the day, you do have to achieve 70 out of the 100 total points that you could achieve in each column uh, to achieve that solutions partner designation. So you only have to do it for modern work. You'll achieve it. You'll start to get your incentives and kickbacks and things like that. But one key asterisk that you can see up in the left-hand corner is that you do have to have greater than zero points, meaning you have to have at least one or 0.1 in some cases because there's fractional points. But at the end of the day, you have to tap into every single category at least once in certain areas. So that means that if you could get 70 points without doing intermediate certs, that won't allow you to achieve the solutions partner designation because you have to have at least the above zero points within that category, if that makes sense. So they're really making you work harder. I know a lot of these cases, if you think about uh, previously what you had to do, like the cloud productivity Con, uh, competency that you used to have to get, you had to have like 2,000 monthly active users and that was it. Or there's another one for small and mid-market solutions where you just had to have four net new customers for the year and that was it and you achieved it. So now you're talking about something that's much more exponential as far as what you have to achieve. So to get more into the details of that, let's go ahead and pivot into a partner center environment so you can see this firsthand with their dashboard that they've created for Solutions Partner. Okay, so I'm here in a partner center environment as an indirect reseller here. This is solution partner overview, and I'll link this in a blog post that I'll supplement and sync this obviously too with the video. But essentially here, if you're an admin, you can view this section within partner center under membership and solutions partner section. And this is where you can come to see kind of your progress. And this is live today for you as well across each of these solution categories that you may be able to tap into or already have started today if you're progressing in certain areas. And so as you can see on the left-hand side, you have all of these various solution categories or areas that you can click into. I'm gonna go ahead and click into modern work because again, I believe that's the focus area that most MSPs that I talk to at least are going to gravitate towards. And this is something, and this is the only category actually where they fork enterprise and SMB. 
So you can click up here on the top and you can click into the SMB section and this will update your tiles as far as your qualifications. And down below you can see those categories we just saw on that previous slide listed where you have performance, skilling, and customer success. And here I can see my progress. I've already gained six out of the 20 points for the net customer ads because I have three out of the 10 required customers. So this is a great way to measure progress. It's also a great way to go and look at the requirements for each of these cards themselves. And for each solution category, these are gonna be different between what's eligible, the association types, and also the, the licensing requirements that you may need along with the calculations. They also have useful links for more information about these calculations because some of them honestly take a minute and you scratch your head a little bit about what that actually means um, within your tenant as well too. But the one thing you'll notice here is that this is extremely uh, much, much harder to get in, in a larger sense because when we talk about uh, previously, when you talk about the cloud productivity competency, it was, in my opinion, very easy to get for the average MSP. When you talk about adding 10 customers, getting three certifications, having 40% usage growth in a 12, trailing 12 month period, increasing monthly active users by 500, that's a lot larger requirement to hit for the average MSP. And honestly, I believe because of these requirements, in addition to the yearly fee, you're gonna see a lot of MSPs that cannot meet this and do not get competencies anymore. So Microsoft's really pushing a lot of the investment towards larger partners in, in a lot of senses, just because you know a lot of these things are become unattainable for certain MSPs. Now, I wouldn't credit this out for everybody. Certain areas you may focus on may have higher levels of, of achieving these types of uh, competencies, or I should say the designations now uh, that they're called. Like infrastructure, for instance, you could be doing way more Azure than you are with M365, and you could be hitting some more of these uh, particular achievements. Like in this case, I have in this environment uh, the 30 deployments here for the ACR, which is the Azure Consumed Revenue, um, in the past 12 months, and I have 428% increase in that as well too, which has achieved me these 30 points. Most likely, any organization can get certs. You know, I don't think that's that's a hard thing to do. But in this case, you're talking about 10 certifications as well too. So that's even a little bit harder in and of itself. And in this case, we only have three customers that we have to acquire and get them onto an Azure paid subscription. So again, that's a little bit more obtainable as well too. But this type of growth might not be something that you can look at. But again, this is much higher than, than required. You know, you have to look at the calculations here for each one of these and evaluate it within your tenant. But they give you these uh, types of standards to look at. And then additionally, when you talk about the cards, you also have the ability here to view the details associated and see any details about your environment. So if I switch back to SMB, I see my three customers. I can see metadata around my environment here. I can download a report of it. They talk about the usage within that particular time frame that I have. And I can also go into the insights pane here and I can see various things about uh, the metrics or, or solutions or areas that I need to go hit. And I can view the metric details to see more graphical views about what's going on in the environment, such as in this case, the monthly active users. Just a better way to narrow down to try to help you out if you're really trying to pursue these solutions areas and understand how you need to go and direct your team or navigate sales activity if you're really gonna to try to do this um, or if you think you have the potential to go and do this as well too. The only final piece I wanna showcase here within the partner center environment is this benefits for solution partner. This will actually download the PDF that you need for the IURs. So if you click on that, you can see, or as they're now known as product benefits, I should be saying. So if you scroll down here, this is where you can see the marketing benefits um, for go, or go to market here for some of the areas. But then you get into your solution designations here and you can click into them to see some of the kickbacks that you get as far as the licensing goes. So if we go into modern work here, again, one of the most common ones I think that people can achieve this is where you have things like the E5 licensing here instead of E3, up to 200 users instead of 100. So that's some of the other benefits that you get. You also get Azure credits and dynamic sandbox and all these other um, environments or 
particularly licensing that you have here that you didn't have previously, even things like Windows 365 Enterprise licenses as well too. So the IURs have definitely gotten better in that particular sense, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense because of the harder requirements and maybe you're paying the, the fee that you were not previously if you were a silver partner. So we touched on this briefly earlier, but the incentive rebates are not changing when you talk about this new program as far as your eligibility and what you get. As a solutions partner designation, you are eligible and you get the same rebates as you got today um, for these programs. You can see that in the cross comparison here of these two images. That might change in the future, but as of right now, they are the same rate. Okay, so final slide here, we're gonna talk about timelines. This is one of the most important slides because if you're an MSP who might not meet the requirements for solution partner designation, you have to know when your legacy competencies will expire. And if you're on the opposite end, your partner who is already eligible for solutions partner designation, you wanna be able to know when you can convert into the new program. First date here, September 30th, 2022. This is the last date to renew into a legacy competency, meaning you re renew into a silver or gold competency, and that will be good throughout your anniversary date. Let's say though that you have an anniversary date that's after this date, meaning that you have a date of anniversary of sometime in November, for instance. In that case, Microsoft is going to allow you to purchase legacy benefits up until October of 2023. When we say purchase legacy benefits means that you can purchase the right to get the rebates and the IURs as part of the program, but you do not get to promote that you are a silver or gold partner because that will no longer be valid and you're not obtaining you know, competencies anymore in that particular case either. You're not continuing to pursue those in, in those circumstances. The same is true of the solutions partner designation. You can start to earn badges as of October 3rd uh, of this year, and let's say your legacy benefit anniversary date again, maybe this one is in January, that is when you'll be able to convert into Solutions Partner if you're already eligible today. You can auto-convert right immediately if you still have an anniversary date on legacy up until that point in time, um, but that's when you'll be able to convert the next time. The last date there, October 1st, 2023, is when the Partner Solution designation will be the only recognition for getting incentives and the legacy competencies and legacy benefits won't be available any longer. So that's where if you were previously paying Microsoft to continue to get those benefits, you only have up until that point in time. At that point in time, if you do not meet the solution partner designation requirements, you just won't be part of the incentive program anymore. So pretty heavy handed. There's a lot to take in there. Uh, this was a lot of confusion, honestly, between Microsoft's messaging. I had to div dive deep into the FAQs to kind of find this information, which I will link below as well, too. But these are the major timelines that you'll have to pay attention to over the next year. All right, I know that was a lot to take in, but I will have a blog post supplementing all this information here that I'll link below in this video. I would definitely check that out for a little bit more content. I'll link some other resources there like Microsoft's FAQ, which has a ton of information. You have additional questions. Additionally, if you want to ask me those questions, feel free to comment those below. Otherwise, if you like this and you wanna see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe.